Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We're in section 4.2 trigonomic functions, the unit circle. And we're going to be doing what's called the unit circle today. It's going to be legend dairy. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, first, we're going to take a look at what we, we're going to call trigonomic functions. Things like sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Uh, you've probably heard of those before, but maybe newer is cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. And we're going to figure out what all of these means. Now, theta is the angle, this angle that is sitting right here on our triangle. And you can see the adjacent or next to this angle is the x, the x. The opposite is going to be the y and of course this hypotenuse. I'm going to call this hypo hypotenuse r. Okay, so if I want to know what the sine of this angle is, sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, the opposite over hypotenuse. Where cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And the and obviously you've probably heard of Chief Sokotoa before. And Chief Sokotoa is a little uh, mnemonic device for sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, Sokotoa. Okay. Well, we have these other functions, which is cosecant of theta. And cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine of theta, which means it's going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite. It just flips it. The secant of theta is going to be 1 over the cosine of theta, the reciprocal of cosine, which is hypotenuse over adjacent. And of course, cotangent of theta is going to be 1 over tangent of theta, which is going to be the adjacent over the opposite. Okay, now you can see how I didn't just do opposite adjacent hypotenuse, I also did x, y, and r, which you can see the sine of the theta the sine of theta is going to be equal to the opposite, which is y over hypotenuse of r. So sine deals with this vertical, this y value, this vertical, whereas cosine deals with this horizontal or this range, okay, or x over the hypotenuse r. And tangent is equal to opposite, that's y, over x. Hopefully you can see in this tangent you have the sl a slope going on, the slope formula. The change in y over the change in x is the tangent of theta, okay, whereas Cosecant is just the reciprocal of that, r over y, r over x for secant, and x over y for cotangent there. Okay, and those are our trigonomic functions. Okay, and now on to what we call the unit circle. The unit circle. And so what the unit circle is, it's a circle that shows everything from 0 radians to 2 pi radians, or from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Okay, and obviously you can see each one of these angles makes up a different triangle. And I'm going to really color code things. You can thank me later by... Um, giving me uh, gift cards and letters of affirmation and just, you know, just hugs and, you know, all those great things. And because I'm going to color code the unit circle for you. Uh, I have a unit circle on MrAiden.com. Please print one out. I'm going to give you one in class. Always have the unit circle with you. It's really going to help out a lot. And so obviously I'm going to do what's called color code the unit circle and that way it's going to be like a big cheat sheet for you. Okay. And so first I'm going to take a look just in quadrant one right here. So I'm only going to look in quadrant one. Now let's look at zero degrees or zero radians. Okay. So if I have something at zero radians, it, uh, an, a triangle, and you're like, that's not a triangle, it's just a straight line. You're right. This is just a straight line, but you can see it's all in the x, isn't it? It's all in the horizontal. It's all in the cosine. So the cosine of zero radians or zero degrees, the cosine is equal to one. It's all in the horizontal, and there's nothing in the vertical, so it's zero. So if you on your calculator put sine of zero, you would get zero. If you put cosine of zero, you would get one in your calculator. Okay. Now let's go to the next easiest angle, which is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So let's say I have a, uh, I'm going to go in this angle right here. I'm going to go just straight up. I don't have to go at all anywhere in the x, which means my cosine is equal to zero. Remember, cosine deals with x, your horizontal. If you put sine of 90 degrees in your calculator, or sine of pi over 2 radians in your calculator, you would get equal to 1 because we're going all vertical, aren't we? We're going all vertical. Okay. Now, let's, uh, let's finish out this, this, uh, 
this first quadrant. So let's say we have something at 45 degrees. Now I hope you can see if I have an, a triangle at 45 degrees, it's the same in the X as it is in the Y. So if you wanted to measure that out, you would end up getting X would be uh, root 2 over 2. So if you did cosine of 45 degrees in your calculator, cosine of pi over 4 radians in your calculator, you would get root 2 over 2. And you would, of course, get root 2 over 2 because your sides, your X's and Y's, have to be the same. Okay. Now let's take a look at, at 30 degrees. If you were to draw a triangle at 30 degrees, do you see how, I'm going to draw a triangle right at 30 degrees, do you see how the blue, the horizontal, is longer than the red, the vertical? Okay, and that's true if you did cosine of that angle and sine of that angle. Cosine of that angle would be root 3 over 2, and the sine of that angle would be 1 half. Okay, now if you did 60 degrees, 60 degrees, the vertical is bigger. The vertical is root 3 over 2, and the horizontal is 1 half. So, in class, if I asked you, what is cosine of 30 degrees? You look at the blue, cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. If I said, what is sine of pi over 2? You go to pi over 2, sine is in the red, it's equal to 1. Now, if you know quadrant 1, you literally know the rest of the unit circle. And I'm going to show you. Let's say we go to quadrant 2, quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, again, I'm going to do my little uh, thing so that I can write these in. Okay, let's go to quadrant 2. Take a look at 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, we're going this way. We're going this way, which means we're going all negative in our x. So we have negative 1. We don't go anywhere in the y, so that's 0. Okay. Do you see in quadrant 2, everything in the x is going to be negative because in order to get here, we got to go negative in the x, we got to go positive in the y, don't we? Okay, And so you can see at 135 degrees, we have negative root 2 over 2. We have negative 1 half. We have negative root 3 over 2. Everything in the x is negative, but everything in the y is positive. 1 half root 2 over 2. That's a 2 right there, sorry. And root 3 over 2. And I hope you can see all the y values and the x values correspond except for the x values in quadrant 2 is negative. Now if we look in quadrant 3, quadrant 3, in order to get to anywhere in quadrant 3 we have to go negative in the x and negative in the y. Negative in the x and negative in the y. Which means, think about it, in order to get our negative in the x, all of our x's are going to be negative. We have negative root 3 over 2. We have negative root 2 over 2. We have negative 1 half. We have uh, 0 right here. Okay, Everything uh, right here in quadrant 2, you can see if we go uh, in the x, our, all of our x's correspond. Our y values are negative though, so rather than going up 1 half, we're going to go down 1 half. Not up root 2 over 2, down root 2 over 2. Not up three, root 3 over 2, down root 3 over 2. Not up 1, but down 1. Okay, negative 1. Okay. Then we go quadrant 4. Quadrant 4, you can see in the x value, the cosine, everything is positive, isn't it? Everything is positive, which means root, root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. 1 half, 1 half. Everything's positive. It's our y's that are negative. So negative 1 half. Negative root 2 over 2. And negative root 3 over 2. And that is our unit circle. And so you're going to have this in class. And if I say, what is cosine of? Cosine of 5 pi over 3. Cosine of 5 pi over 3. Cosine is the first value, the one in blue. It's 1 half. If I said, what is sine of 7 pi over 6? You go to 7 pi over 6. Sine is the second value, that red value, negative 1 half. And so we're going to be able to use our unit circle to find out a bunch of different things. Now, there is this thing called, remember I said that the, the, the first quadrant is the most important. Because if you know the first quadrant, you can know the rest of them, can't you? Okay. So we have this thing called the left-hand trick. 
okay? The left hand trick is God has given you a left hand, okay? And in this left hand, you can see God's given you zero degrees, pi over two, pi over four, pi over six, and pi over three. And the fingers on the top is going to be cosine. The fingers on the bottom is going to be sine. And you're always going to do the square root of the fingers over 2. So let's say we, we have 0 degrees. 0 degrees, I kind of remove this finger. I kind of pull it back. And you can see how many fingers do I have on top? I have 4 fingers. So square root of 4, that's 2, divided by 2. And we end up getting 1. What's the sign? The sign is on the bottom. How many fingers do I have on the bottom when I'm at this? I have no fingers. Do you see how that gave me my value right here at zero degrees, one zero? Let's take a look at pi over six. So pi over six right here. We have this finger right here. Count your fingers on the top. How many fingers do I have on the top? I have three fingers. That's square root of three over two. So what's cosine of pi over 6? That's root 3 over 2. How many fingers on the bottom? We only have one finger on the bottom. Which one finger on the bottom is 1 half. Square root of 1 is 1. Divided by 2 is 1 half. Now let's do 45 degrees or pi over 4. Pi over 4 or 45 degrees. Let's take a look. How many fingers do I have on the top? Remember, top is cosine. I have two fingers. Square root of 2 over 2. How do we figure out how many fingers on the bottom? I have two. That's root 2 over 2. God has given you this amazing trick um, because your fingers definitely resemble this unit circle. Let's say pi over 3. Pi over 3. How many fingers do I have on the top? I only have one finger on the top when I'm at pi over 3. So that's 1 half. Root, root 1 divided by 2. How many fingers do I have on the bottom? I have 3 fingers. So that's root 3 over 2. And then last but not least at pi over 2 right here. How many fingers do I have on the top? I have no fingers on the top, so we're, we're zero for the cosine. I have four fingers on the bottom, square root of four over two. That's one. And guess what? God's given you this trick, a little left-hand trick to find out this first quadrant. And think about it. All the things are positive in this first quadrant. Only the sine is positive in this second quadrant. Only the um, tangent is positive because the sine and the cosine are both negative. The negative divided by negative is positive. And only the cosine is positive right here. And we have a little acronym is all students take calculus. It kind of tells you which ones will be positive in this. And you can see only the sine is positive here. Only the tangent is positive here. Only the cosine is positive. Okay, so let's uh, do a few examples. So let's try to evaluate some trigonomic functions. So our angle is pi over 6. Where's pi over 6? Pi over 6 is right here, isn't it? So what would be the sine? Remember, sine is the, the second half, which is, that's 1 half, isn't it? Cosine is the first value. That's root 3 over 2. So what would the cosecant be? That would be 2 over 1. It's just a reciprocal. What's the secant is 2 over root 3. And remember, we have to rationalize that. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by root 3. So we get 2 root 3 over 3. Now, what's the tangent? The tangent, remember, is equal to the sine divided by the cosine. Okay. So we're going to do the sine, 1 half, divided by the cosine, which means I'm going to do the, when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm left with... The 2's cancel out, 1 over root 3, or if you rationalize that, root 3 over 3, which means the cotangent is going to be this reciprocal is root 3 over 1, or just root 3. Okay, So that's evaluating the six trigonomic functions. Let's try another one. We have 5 pi over 4. Where's 5 pi over 4? He's right here, isn't he? 5 pi over 4. Okay, What's the sign? The sign is the second one, negative root 2 over 2. What's the cosine? negative root 2 over 2. Uh, think about tangent. Tangent is negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal. That equals positive 1. Positive 1 over 1. Positive 1 over 1. So let's do the reciprocals of everything. What's the cosecant? Is negative 2 over root 2. Negative 2 over root 2. 
and 1 over 1. Just flip everything. And of course we can rationalize by multiplying by root 2 over 2. So we get negative 2 root 2 over 2, which ends up being negative root 2, which means he's also negative root 2 as well. Let's go to another example, example 3. Uh, what if our angle is 0? Our angle is 0, this angle right here. Well, what's the sine? The sine is 0 over 1, isn't it? Okay. What's the cosine? It's 1 over 1. And what's a tangent? Is sine over cosine. 0 over 1 divided by 1 over 1, which means 0 over 1. Now, what about the cosecant? The cosecant is going to be 1 over 0, but guess what? <laughs> That doesn't work, doesn't it? Which means that is undefined. You can't have a zero in the denominator. Flip this guy, one over one. This is one over zero or undefined as well. So if you put cosecant of zero in your calculator, you would get undefined for that. Let's go one more example on evaluating trig functions. We're going to be pi. Where's pi at? Pi is right here. What's my sine? My sine is zero over one. My cosine is negative one over one. My tangent is sine over cosine, which means we're zero over one which means we're going to do what's the reciprocal of 1 over 0. Well, that's undefined. Negative 1 over 1, flip that, and undefined for that guy. Okay, So that is our evaluating trig functions. I guess we got another one, which is negative pi over 3. Now, take a look. Positive pi over 3 is this way, which means negative pi over 3 is this way, which means really this angle is really 5 pi over 3, isn't it? It's really the 5 pi over 3. It's really right here, which means what's our sine? Our sine is negative root 3 over 2. Our cosine is 1 half, and my tangent is negative root 3 over 2 divided by this 1 half, or divided by 2 over 1, the reciprocal, which means we're root th is posi uh, sorry, po negative root 3 over 1. And why is it negative? Because the sine is negative right here. And we're in this quadrant right here. So co cosecant, i got to flip this guy. So negative 2 over root 3. Or if you rationalize by multiplying by root 3 and over root 3 on the top and bottom, we have negative root 3, negative 2 root 3 over 3. Flip this guy, we get 2 over 1. Flip this guy, we get negative 1 over root 3. We do have to rationalize that negative root 3 over 3 right there. Okay. We also have what's called even and odd trig functions. Okay, Even and odd trig functions, take a look. Your cosine functions and your secant functions are even functions, which means if even if you put a negative x in there, you're still going to get positive, which means cosine and secant are even functions. Everything else is an odd function. Okay. And I hope you can see on your calculators, uh, let's say you have a TI30XS 2S, which is just a regular calculator. I hope you can see you have your sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. Sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. You do not have secant buttons, uh, cosecant buttons, cotangent buttons. Okay. If you wanted to do that, you would have to do 1 divided by the sine or do sine of some angle to the negative 1. Uh, something that I do want to point out is if you go to your uh, DRG right here, that you can change from degrees to radians and so on and so forth. So make sure you're in the right mode. If you're doing degrees, be in degrees. If you're in radians, be in radians. Okay. If you have something like the TI-84+, plus, you're going to want to go to mode to change from degrees to radians. You can see you have a sine button, cosine button, and a tangent button as well. Okay. If you have a TI Inspire calculator, it's you're going to have to go to Menu and go to Settings to change from degrees to radians. Usually, uh, I have one of these TI Inspires. I usually set my TI Inspire to be radians, and then I usually have a scientific calculator to do degrees. I just keep around two calculators, uh, just because uh, these little Texas Instrument TI 30XS are really, really, really uh, cheap. You can see you actually have what's called a trig button. Okay, and in that trig button, you actually have sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent as well. So you're able to do every single function in the TI Inspire calculator. And that is the chapter 4.2, trig functions, the unit circle. See you guys.